I have a few things I'm going to share with you tonight. Did you want us to bring out the truck real quick? No, I don't know. I haven't got there yet. <laughs> Over 400 years are over. Yay. And we are now free. We are free. And we know that as we come out of freedom, that we come out with great substance. So, what do you expect? What are you expecting? And the key is that. Your expectations need to be from his heart. Yeah. And if they're his expectations, you can be guaranteed that they will be manifest yeah. in their due season. Yeah. So I want to share a few scriptures with you. And the first is Exodus 6, 1 through 9. And I'm going to read it all you know, to get to the point. But it says, Then the Lord said unto Moses, now shalt thou see what I will do to Pharaoh. For with a strong hand shall he let them go. And with a strong hand shall he drive them out of this land. And Elohim spake unto Moses and said unto him, I am Yahuwah. And I appeared unto Abraham, unto Isaac, and unto Jacob by the name of El Shaddai. But my name Yahuwah was I not known to them. And I have also established my covenant with them to give them the land of Canaan, the land of their pilgrimage, pilgrimage wherein they were strangers. And I have also heard the groaning of the children of Israel, whom the Egyptians keep in bondage, and I have remembered my covenant. Wherefore, say unto the children of Israel, I am Yahuwah, yes. and I will bring you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians, and I will bring you out of their bondage, and I will redeem you with a stretched out arm and with great judgments. And I will take you to me for a people, and I will be to you Elohim. And ye shall know that I am Yahuwah your Elohim, which bringeth you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians, which is spirit, spiritual bondage. And I will bring you into the land concerning the which I did swear to give it to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. And I will give it to you for a heritage. I am Yahuwah. And Moses spake so unto the children of Israel, but they hearkened not unto Moses for anguish of spirit and for cruel bondage. Even though they, had, they were told that you're free, you're, you're no longer in bondage, because they had been in such a place of captivity and cruelty that they couldn't even hear it. So anguish of spirit is extreme distress of body, mind, or spirit. Excruciating pain or suffering of soul. So I, when I read this scripture, you know, I said, well, that's where a lot of people are. You know, they need deliverance. They desire deliverance. But their lives have been so bound up by the enemy and they've been deceived in so many ways that even when the word comes to them, even when deliverance comes, they can't hear it nor they can't nor they can nor can they accept it. They cannot only hear, they don't even hear what the most high says about them. You know, they don't they read the word they read what the word says, I am, you know, who I am in the most high, but they don't hear it because there's a blockage in their spiritual man because of that anguish and that cruelty and that bondage. But we're not there. 
That's not our portion. Because we know, we know who our Elohim is. And we are confident that he knows our name as well as we know his name. And in verse 5 it says, I have remembered my covenant. Yahuwah says he's remembered his covenant. But we also have to remember that we are covenant sons and daughters. And as a covenant child, there are certain promises that are due us. Amen. And bondage is not one of them. Freedom is our portion. Yes. You know, abundance yes. is our portion. Yes. So we don't want to be like, you know, the, the children of Israel, you know, now that we've come out of bondage. Just even though freedom is all around us, we're still walking in the past. And, you know, we've been hearing the word often, reset, reset, reset. And part of that reset is leaving the past behind. You know, you can't drag your past into your place of freedom and expect to receive the substance that's, that you have actually walked out with. You know, because you, you're so, we can be so spiritually blinded that we don't even see all the goodness that's around us. We, don't, we miss the blessings sometimes, you know, because we're looking, we're looking through uh, their scales on our eyes. And we can't see. But no more. That's the point. We have moved into a new place, a new place of freedom. And what's going to keep us in that place of freedom is the words of our mouth. Yeah, yes. mm -hmm. And as we study the word, and as we begin to speak what we study and what we understand and what we've been given revelation on, then we will begin to see that place of freedom begin to expand. Mm -hmm. And it will begin to overtake everything around us. And we will begin to see our desires manifest now. You know, not 10, 15, 20 years ahead of the world, but now. Say that. Because we are the chosen. We are the elect. And he said his promise is a yes and amen. Yeah. So that means it's a done deal. Yeah. You know, we don't have to doubt, we don't have to worry. Because we remember that we are covenant sons and daughters. Now, the next scripture that he showed me in relation to this is uh, Jeremiah 6, 16. And it reads, Thus saith our Elohim, Stand ye in the ways, and see, and ask for the old paths. Where is the good way? And walk therein and you shall find rest for your souls. But they said, we will not walk therein. Those of us gathered here have decided to ask for the old paths. We know where the good way is, and we are walking therein. And that walk, that path that we're walking is a narrow path. And the Ruach gave me this scripture years ago, and I never understood it. What are the old ways? You know, where is the good way? You know, I couldn't understand it. So I guess after uh, 10, 15 years, I finally got revelation on it. And, the, and I received revelation on it because I'm aware that I am now Hebrew. <laughs> and the old paths are the Hebrew way. Yeah. Are the paths that were created before the foundation of the world. Yes. And those paths are on the inside of me as well. The good way is on the inside of me. And rest is on the inside of me. Because everything was sown in us. His word is sown in us. And it says he is, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God. And the word is God. So his word is on the inside of us. Yahushua is on the inside of us. Amen. So everything that we need is on the inside of us. It is. And, you know, sometimes we look everywhere for the most high. We go to conferences, we go to 
different churches, we take classes, we go to this prophet, we go to that prophet. And all we have to do is look on the inside because that's where he is. Because we're one with him, he's one with us. So the old paths are here. So as we study his word, seek him for revelation, asking him to illuminate that word, those paths are going to be revealed to us. And, and, and as those paths are revealed to us, that's where we begin to find rest. Because we're confident. We're confident of who's on the inside of us. Knowing that it's not left up to us, it's not left up to our intellect to try to put these paths together. All we have to do, submit. We have to yield to the leading of the Ruach HaKadosh. And those paths are going to appear right before us. And the old paths are obeying the commandments and statutes. You know, our forefathers just went their own way. They went a whore and after idols. They lived wickedly. That's not the path for us. No. Because we stand upright before the most high. We are his righteousness in the ocean. So, you know, just, uh, you know, when you think about it, when you find rest, Rest brings peace. And when you're rested and that peace comes upon you, then you can think clearly. You can hear clearly. You can make wise decisions. And then you gain greater wisdom, and that wisdom enables you to apply all that you're gaining understanding of as he illuminates it as we study. That's why it's so important that we study right now. Because if we don't study, we can't activate the word that's on the inside of us. Yeah. So it's it's a path that we're on. And it's an easy path. And we will not be as those who said we will not walk there yet. Because we have purpose to follow the ways of the Most High. Yes. And a couple of mornings ago, he woke me up at 4.30 a.m. And he said, walk circumspect because the enemy is at the gate mm. and we know that because we have moved into a new place a place of freedom yeah. that the enemy doesn't want us there right. and i don't know about y'all but these past couple of weeks it's been some warfare oh, yeah. 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 but you know yeah. i knew yeah. i knew it was for yeah. purpose it was trying to distract me, trying to get me to say something out of my mouth that did not lie with what the Most High said. And all we have to do, you remind him, I'm a covenant son or daughter of the Most High God. This is what my Elohim said to me. So you just have to get the step. Because <laughs> it ain't happening because I'm not moving. Yeah. I'm not moving, you know, because I believe in Isaiah, uh, I think it's 43. Uh, oh, no, it's Isaiah 45. And it says, thus says the Most High to his anointed, to Cyrus, whose right hand I have held, to subdue nations before him and loose the armor of king, kings, to open before him the double doors so that the gates will not be shut. And the gates for our freedom cannot be shut. The gates to our provision cannot be shut. The gates to our anointing cannot be shut. Then he says, I will go before you and make the crooked places straight. I will break in pieces the gates of bronze and cut the bars of iron. So the enemy may be at the gate, huh, 
But it's nothing he can do. He can only do what we allow him to do. Because this is what the word of the Most High says. That the gates of bronze have been broken in pieces and the bars of iron have been cut. So that means we can just step through the gate and wave bye-bye to the end. Because we we're moving on. And we're moving on to greater doors, greater windows, greater portals. Greater provision, greater manifestation, greater faith. Yes. So the last scripture he shared was Matthew 11, 28, 29. And it says, Come to me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you, you will find rest unto your souls. And our soul is our mind, will, and emotions. And that's what usually gets us in the most trouble. We start thinking the wrong thing, we start asking for the wrong thing, and we let our emotions get out of control. And as soon as the enemy sees that, he says, oops, I got a door in. You know, so we, and as a, Pastor Pam was saying, we can't take offense. We can't be angry. We have to, our emotions have to be sanctified and set apart for the most time. And that's not saying we don't have emotions, because we do. But they must be in align, alignment with what's on the inside of us, which is the Word. And if we know Yeshua said that um, those that are labor and heavy laden, you know, if you have things that are just weighing you down and, you know, troubles and worries, give it to Him. Yeah. Just lay it at His feet. And He'll take it. You know, if you have, uh, and with most of us, our family members are our biggest distraction. Oh, say that. And it's because we love. Yeah, they're so close to us. Right. You know? Yeah, because you know, we don't let everybody come as close as we do our family members. You know, our blood family members. So the enemy knows that. So that's where he pokes us the most. You know, sometimes your family members can say something and you look at them like, did that come out of their mouth? And you have to look past it and know that it's not them. Yeah. Right. It's, it's the enemy in them that's responding to what's on the inside of you. And it makes them mad. Yeah. It makes the enemy mad. You know, the here she is. Look at her. Now, I have just about cussed her out and said everything I could say. And what does she do? She still loves me. She still wants the best. So it just burns and up. Burns and love. But what it does is a witness to your, to your family members yeah. that the Elohim that you talk about is real. Yeah. Because I see it in my mother, I see it in my father, I see it in my sister, I see it in my brother. And what that does, it causes them to want to taste which, which, what you've been witnessing through them, witnessing to them through your very lifestyle. Because often you don't have to say a word to them. Right. You just step in. And because what you carry on the inside of you, it just it just diffuses the situation. And not only will it diffuse the situation, it activates the angelic hosts. And they come and they protect you, whereas whatever is going on won't stick to you. And it won't be a curse to your bloodline or to your generation. Because this is truly a time of freedom. Yes. And we have stepped into that place. We're moving in that place. And we can expect, we can truly expect things that we've never seen. Right. Things that we have never imagined. We can expect to be in places that we, we probably never even heard of. But he's going to take us there. Wow. 
and he's going to provide the provision. Yes, yes. And he's drawing and preparing the people right now. That's right. So he's just waiting on us right. to come in agreement with right. him and begin to expect the best because we are his best. Yes. I read in the word, it said, I was his special treasure. That's right. And you know what? I believe it. I believe it. I mean, I had somebody tell me, you ain't, ooh, ooh, bad, ooh, he loves you. I said, yeah, that's right, I'm a special person. <laughs> I don't expect anything less. Yeah. But I want to close with the Hebrews 11, 6. And it says, but without faith, it is impossible to, put, to please him. For he who comes to Yahuwah must believe that he is and that he is a reward of those who diligently seek him. So, as you seek him through your word, through the study of the word, as you seek him in worship, as you seek him in prayer and supplication and thanksgiving, knowing that you will be rewarded. And all he asks us to do is believe. Yeah. Simply believe. Amen. So that's all I have. Amen. I thank you for your and I love my family. I love my family. And I
and it just goes and it just flows. It just flows because we're one. See? <laughs> Because it was as Pastor Sherry was teaching, and she said that the Most High has sown His laws on the inside of us, and there's certain things that we need to start tapping into. He says, "I need you to check your pockets. No different than inside of my garment, inside of your garments, you have pockets." And many times we put things, because it's been sewn into our garment, we put things into our pockets only to come and find them later. And as you were teaching, that's what I saw. He says, you need to check your pockets. You need to check what I have sewn on the inside of you because there's a richness, there's a supply that is there that if you just begin to reach inside of your own self, and this goes back to what Pastor Sherry was teaching, in that we go to this place and that place, but it was always on the inside of us. You also said something about our imagination right towards the end, and many times, and he wants to do an activation, is that we're not using our imagination as fully as we could. Because right now, if you was to go in your pocket, yeah, you may not be feeling anything, but can you see what's there? And you have to see it first. So let's do a little bit of activation. So for instance, visualization comes this way. You start with those things that are familiar. How many of y'all know what your bedroom looks like? You have forgot where you put your keys some mornings and you kind of sit down and you go back in your mind and you retrace your steps. You are visualizing. You are using your imagination to connect with the thing that you thought you lost. And the Most High says that's how powerful our imagination is. He gave it to us, not for us to imagine, but the thing is we are imagining so that we can connect back again to the thing that we thought we lost. In Acts it says, I put eternity on the inside of you so that some kind of way you might feel your way back to me in the hope that you would find me. Yeah. This is the thing, there are things that are in our pockets that we need to begin to imagine. We need to see, I, right now my pockets to y'all might look completely empty. But just for the fact that I heard the word of the Most High tell me he sold something on the inside of me and all I have to do is just reach into my garment and find it. I got to rustle around in there. I have to pray in the spirit. I got to rustle around because in the wrestling there's a searching. Because the word declares this, that the spirit of God goes and begins to search out the deep things of God. And so you have to ask the Ruach HaKadosh to come alongside you. And as you begin to pray in your heavenly language, then he begins to go and search out that, you know what, you have this word that you need to release. You got this business that you got to let go of and you got to begin to manifest. If you have a song on the inside of you that I have released to the nations, but if you never go in and allow the Ruach to begin to search out the deep place of God that's on the inside of your garment, that's what your, your words, and the thing is, I know it's a garment because the first thing he made for Adam and Eve was a garment of skin. So I know it's not nothing but a garment. I just have to figure out, give me a code to get into the pockets. Give me a code to break open the garment. You ain't got to break it open. You just got to ask for the code. See, the enemy tries to break us open. The, the, the most high just opens us. But so we've already been given access. That's it. We've already been given access. And so we have to begin to pray in the spirit more because the Ruah knows what it is. And I, and I have to say that sometimes we don't want to pray in our heavenly language either because, number one, if you don't have it. Now, if you don't have it, please don't leave here without him. Please. Please. But sometimes it's because you don't understand in the beginning what he's saying. But right now, at the beginning, he's not interested in you understanding. He's interested in building you up. So there's certain things that we can't pray with our mouths because we don't have the understanding and the things are so deep 
that the only way it can be communicated is spirit to spirit. And not only that, it goes back to the very first word that Pastor Sherry sh shared, which was sometimes our spirit is so broken, we don't even know how to pray. And the word declares, I gave you the Ruach because even in your infirmities, in your weakness, in your anguish of spirit, I knew you wouldn't know how to ask. That's why I gave you the Ruach so he could ask on your behalf. You have, we have to begin to use our help. The Lord, he's the helper. So let him help you. I, I, this is for me. This is not for you. This is for me. <laughs> and, I'll, and all I can hear the Spirit of God say is, let me help you do this. And I don't care, y'all, you guys are na na na. Na 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 na. I'm a na 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 na. Na 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 na. She can't take it, but we'll see until it becomes something more. Because the thing is, we become when we first receive the Spirit of God. It is, it sounds just like you. Prophet over there. <laughs> It's probably just saying da 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 da. I'm probably probably hotter than 45. <laughs> but prophet over there is not speaking whole sentences at this point. But let him keep on with the da 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 ma ma. Eventually, it turns into full words, and it begins to turn into the language that we can understand. And that's how the ruach hakodesh wants to operate on the inside of us. He's like, let me break you open some more. Let me unlock you some more so that you can begin to see as you linger in this thing as you linger with me longer and longer and longer you will understand what I am saying and I don't honestly I have been in prayer and I'm like I know I ain't heard that's a word that, that ain't no na 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 no no that's a word that's a whole entire sentence I just said and I just bust the demon upside the head with <laughs> You let him take your tongues into a different language. And it doesn't matter if in the beginning you don't understand it, but I promise you, the Ruach is making intercession. Yes. And his intercession is so perfect. Yes. Yes. And he's helping us to find out what's in our pockets. Amen. Yeah. 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 Uh, and and y'all act as a team. That's, you know how uh, a river flows? Y'all flow like a river. Right? I was standing over there, and this woman right here, she, Lord, that's a mighty woman of God right there. It's mighty, and I don't know you, but that's what God said, mighty woman of God. Right? So, let, let me tell you, when you were talking about the times, uh, the spirit was all over me and things were manifesting, but I didn't have my prayer language. Oh. Well, you see my sister right here? <laughs> she said, guess what, Sam, you need to do that. And I'm like, I got so much going on right now with God. He has given me all this stuff. I feel like I'm overloaded. And she looked at me. She said, if you get your prayer language, that's going to make it so much easier. So everything will come easier. It's going it's to accelerate you, right? And move you where you need to go, right? So, I'm at this church and when she said that, I said, okay, Lord, I can do this now. <laughs> because I, I just didn't receive it. In, in my mind, I was thinking, I'm not going, it's just too much. I can't do this, right? And I mean, everybody else is doing it, but I'm going like, well, you know, I don't know if I need this. But after she explained it to me, I release myself. And that's what you have to do is release yourself to receive. And then it will be done. Because God, he, when you ask, he hears you, and it will be done. So uh, I was at another church. 
I was walking around. They said, hey, could you pray? Walk around and pray. So I got up and I went, and I, they, they call it praying down the walls and getting stuff out of the church. So I'm thinking, I, he is my English come out. I went like, oh, I'm going to have a little fight. Guess what? I'm like, what? What was that? No, I, that was like, I was going like, you know what? This, this is the funny boy. Do you know, I, when I first got my tongue, I could only speak as long as I could hold my breath. I didn't know how to take breaths between my words. <laughs> I walked and heard three different tongues that night because I traveled the world, right? So I know different dialects. Now, one was like a little Asian thing going on there. One I had no idea, and the other one like was a Middle Eastern tongue, right? So uh, I'm just telling you, all you have to do is release, right? Just release. And you probably, we all prophesied that she said something, that you came here for one reason, well, I did come to support my sister, right? But the Holy Spirit told me when I was leaving, he said, but you know what? You have to be always connected to this kind of house, a prophetic house. He said, you have to go because they're going to flow in it and you got to be connected to them. So that's what I heard before I got here. So she just gave me a confirmation. And, and the things that y'all were saying, which y'all didn't know, as we were in worship, God was showing me some stuff about where he was bringing me, like opening new doors, and I had to walk in. Like, I like how she said, like that engine, them pistons are pumping, right? <laughs> and moving ahead. And, and as y'all gave the words, it, it ministered to me and gave me, it just, it, it gave me confirmation of what God uh, was bringing me because God can do some very odd things uh, that was a time when God, because I was begging so much, I'm a beggar, right? I beg for everything when it comes to the things of God. So he was thinking, well, that's like, you're not mature enough for this. We're not giving you all this stuff, but you know what? I'm going to give it to you for a while so you can see. So the word, somebody else said, I will speak the word, and then what we done at that time, everything that came out of my mouth was done. Uh, and when I say that, and, and that's, this is for y'all also. Just as God gave it to me, it's a now time. You have to believe that every word that you pronounce is going to be done when they line up with the word of God. You have to believe when you lay hands on somebody, they are healed. When you call that demon out, he jumps, right? Because God showed me just for a season, he, everything that I said was manifesting. I'm gonna make y'all laugh. I laid hand. They had a, I had a car. The time chain was broke. I had to take the motor out and fix it. So God reminded me of a story about uh, you know when an axe head. Uh, he was using his name with axe head, right? It floated when the prophet came through the stick, right? So God told me, He said, "You know that story?" I said, "Yeah." He said, "Sam, you believe me for any physical healing, eyeballs, new limbs, whatever, new heart, lungs." He said, "But you, you're not really believing me for this other thing." So that's against uh, the laws of nature, against science, right? Mm -hmm. So I said, okay. When he showed me that, I was in the garage. I went and laid hands on the car. I said, you are here in Jesus' name. That car never made another rattle. <laughs> <Never made another rabbit. laughs> so, so I'm telling y'all, that's the season y'all in. Right. And guess what? The, the, to go along, and, and I'm about to finish, to go along with that, because you have to do kingdom work, you got to be in resources. Yeah. So the resources that's coming to you is for you and for kingdom building. Yeah. It just ain't for you. It's for kingdom building. Yeah. Because I believe they got some people in this room, they're going to be building low-income housing for single mothers. They're going to be opening things that's going to bless single mothers. Right? I, I just, you know, when they got car problems, they're going to drive over here because it's the Holy Spirit place. And they're going to get their car fixed for free, right? 
I'm just telling y'all, you do got to know when you get released that money, that money is to use for kingdom building, yes. and he's going to take care of your every need and want, everything. You don't have an abundance plus, plus, plus money for kingdom building. I thank y'all for your time. Our pockets, they are overflowing. 